What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another video and welcome back to the NHL season preview series and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Metropolitan Division. We'll be taking a look at how they finished last year, we'll take a look at team stats, moves this offseason players in and out of the squad, we'll take a look at their projected lineup as well as take a look at their contracts and finish up with what we think they're going to do this upcoming season. But before we get into the episode, Episode. I want to thank you guys so much for the love and support you've been showing the channel. We hit 500 subscribers and I can't thank you guys enough for the support. Let's keep growing. Keep hitting that subscribe button. Join the community. Let's try to hit 750 subscribers next. So I got to count on you guys for doing that. Let's join the channel. Join the community. Let's grow together creating an awesome hockey community. But without further ado, let's go ahead, hop into the video and take a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets. Having had an injury riddled season last year with a lot of their top players out of the year it really didn't help the Blue Jackets cause as they finished up with a record of 37 38 and 7 totaling 81 points on the year team stats on the screen now as well goals full four they were ranked 14th in the league goals against they were 28th they had a power play of 18.6 percent with a penalty kill of only 78.6 percent so nothing too crazy when it comes to the squad they Barely, I wouldn't say barely, they missed out on the wild card with 81 points. The last wild card team was the Capitals with 100 points. The team above the Blue Jackets was the Islanders at 84. So in terms of conference standings, they were actually pretty high up there. Obviously not in a playoff position, but man, a lot of their top players were out with injury. Patrick Line only played 56 games, but he had 56 points. You had Boone Jenner, who had only played 59 games with 44 points. Zach Wierenski, 60 games, 68 games played with 48 points scored. Ross Levick, he was one of their guys, mainstays. He only had 45 points in 81 games played. So in terms of down years, I'd say he had one, but he didn't really have a lot of people around him to, to help out in that regard. They had a rookie superstar coming up, Kent Johnson, last year, but he's going to be one of the sort of newer players full-time this upcoming season for them but as we take a look now at the players that have been brought in and the players that have left we'll do the ones left first you've got Oliver Bjorkstrand having left the squad as well as Kevin Stanland uh, also leaving the squad so that's really all they've lost now when it comes to players coming into the squad they've had a bunch of big names coming in Johnny Gaudreau obviously from the Calgary Flames Eric Gubranson coming into the squad and then a couple of players that I'm looking forward to seeing as really their first year on the squad if they can make it. Kent Johnson, as long as he can stay healthy, it'll be awesome to see him play. Kirill Marchenko, also potentially going to make the squad this year, at least I think he will. Mathieu Olivier, also coming into the squad, I think this year going to be full time, so it'll be interesting to see them coming into the squad but now taking a look on your screen are the projected lineups that first line pretty stout with Goudreau, Jenner and Line. I don't know about Jenner being that top line center I would think that maybe Roslovic or even Sillinger could potentially be bumped up there and play top line minutes but Jenner obviously a very solid centerman second line Nyquist, Roslovic and Voracek very solid second line as Blue Jackets fans, I'm sure you guys are going to look for a bounce back year from Ross Levick having played at Ohio State back in Columbus. It's, it, it'll be interesting to see him and if he can pop off this upcoming season. Third line right now slated is Johnson, Sillinger, and Marchenko. Young up-and-coming line, if that is what they end up going with, would be really interesting to see that form. I would, If I were the Blue Jackets, I'd split them up with Voracek and Nyquist just to put some veteran presence with those younger players and then you got Robinson Corrali and Olivier on that fourth line Corrali obviously we know he's a proven depth player so it'll be interesting to see what he can do for them on the back end you that's it's where they're a little bit weak Wierenski Peaky I think that's how you say his name Peaky potentially is how you say his name um, and then you've got the second line Bogvist and Gervinkov and then Third line, Bean and Gabranson. Again, there's probably a lot of in interchangeable ways that you can move guys around on that. But in between the pipes, you've got Merzlikens and Corpusalo. 
very decent goaltending, which I think is going to be one of their stronger suits this year that could potentially get them into playoffs this upcoming year. But now on your screen are the contracts for the squad. And really, when it comes to the future, a lot of their guys are pretty much signed on. Uh, really, the only one to note on the forward end is Gustav Nyquist. He is 33 years old. And I would say at this point, he's really going to be playing for staying in the NHL. Uh, at 33 years old, who knows what he's got left in the tank, but hopefully it'll be enough to keep him around the squad. I know last year, 53 points in 82 games played. He played all games. He was minus 12 but hopefully he'll be able to put it, put it together depending on if he's playing with any of the young guys or if he gets bumped up with line A or if line A moves down the lineup or who knows. But I think Nyquist will have a big contract year. On the back end, Garvinkov, uh, you have coming up, he is 26 years old. He is probably their one of note when it comes to needing to get a contract done. And then between the pipes, you've got Corposalo who is, I would say, more of a backup-type goaltender. Both him and Merzlikitz are the same age at 28 years old, so he's basically playing for another contract moving forward to stay in the NHL, so we'll have to wait and see how things go with him. Um, next, I mean, when it comes to my predictions for this team, it's really hard to say. This is one of those teams this year that I have a hard time figuring out what they're going to do this year because if they're injured and they're hit with the injury bug again, you could see them around that same mark as where they were last year, around that 80 to 85 point range. Or if, let's say, they players just don't play up to their standard, they could be around maybe the 75 to 80 point range. Or if they pop off, the young guys have a great year. Goaltending is absolutely stout and they're just amazing all around. They could be pushing... 95 to 100 points so this team is one that i have a question mark on they could go one way or another or stay put where they're at i would like to lean towards they're probably going to stay where they're at another year under their belt get another year under their belt for the young guys as well but who knows they could surprise some people especially in a metropolitan division that is pretty top heavy when it comes to the big dogs being big dogs in the division such as the Hurricanes, the Penguins, the Caps, the Rangers, it's going to be tough to crack in and get a playoff position, especially with the other division. If you're fighting for a wild card, you got the Bruins that you got to look out for. You've got now the Senators, you've got potentially the Devils, you've got the Sabers. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty tough for them this upcoming season, I think, to push for a wild card spot. But if they can get some huge contributions from the young guys, such as Johnson, Marchenko, Sillinger. That would be huge. I think Johnny Gaudreau coming over, it'll be interesting to see him in a new environment. But I think him and Line A, if they play together, that is going to be an absolute fire line. Almost you could see potentially the same production that he had with Kachuk with the Calgary Flames, but this time with Lana, who's got a pretty heavy shot. So it'll be interesting to see how that chemistry will mesh together and form in Columbus, hopefully over the next couple of seasons. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I want to hear from the Blue Jackets fans out there. What do you think is going to be the biggest point of this year to try to make the playoffs? Are the forwards going to have to play lights out on the back end? Do they got to stay healthy. How are they going to put it together? They have some solid defensemen there, but is, is depth going to be an issue? Are the goaltenders going to play up to the standard that we expect them to, especially Merz Lincolns? How are they going to stay healthy this year or will they stay healthy this year? I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. If you have made it to this point in the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Stick around as we will be doing these videos all season long. So don't miss out on the opportunity to hop in the comments and we'll chat it up in future videos. But that's going to be it for today's episode. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to drop a thumbs up on this video. But I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.